what you've heard. Would you mind doing that in the time remaining? We only have a few minutes, and I'm really sorry that we shorted you. But I know you're a compassionate person, and you will. <laughs> particularly moved by the experiences of our friends who are volunteering in the prison system. I've also been involved in prison work for many years and I know that it can be transformative for the people that we work with in the prisons. Uh, Buddhism has so many resources to offer. I was going to talk about end-of-life care and how um, the question of death and dying has been enriched by the Buddhist teachings. And um, that's one way. There's so many different ways. Also the conflict resolution um, aspect. But the prison system is a scourge of um, humanity, really. It's just so tragic. And um, solutions are inadequate, inadequate, completely inadequate. Um, I think that we have to look at the question from both the personal and the structural directions because there's something completely wrong with the system that allows two million people to be incarcerated and not take care of them properly. Um, many of them, yeah, it's just horrifying. And when you see um, some of the, the films about um, incarceration, um, it's just terrifying. It's inhumane and we really need to do something about it. So if the Buddhists don't speak out, who's going to do it? I think that the Buddhists are in a position, since we taught compassion and loving kindness, we have an obligation, really, to make our voices heard, to try to uh, make a difference, both with the inmates directly, on a personal level, to share the skills that we have with meditation and sharing the Buddhist teachings, but also to work on a political level. And I think that in many cases around the world, Buddhists have shied away from political involvement. Sometimes the idea of right speech is used to silence us. Uh, this has happened in the case of sexual harassment, for example. And I'm glad that you mentioned the Me Too movement because now people are beginning to speak out about sexual harassment in Buddhist temples and Dharma centers uh, around the world. This is extremely important because some of the trauma, as you pointed out, is um, some of the incarceration is due to the trauma experienced in early childhood through different forms of harassment, including sexual harassment. So the women I work in Hawaii, only women are only allowed to, or before were only allowed to go into women's. And women's uh, facility only has 100 um, residents. And they change every month. It's like a revolving door. And it breaks up many relationships every time people are released. And there, so it's, it's ongoing trauma in the prison system. So um, in there, we find that many women have actually taken the rap for their partners. But then they're separated from their children. And this is, um, so, okay. um, this is again, traumatizing to be separated from their children. In Hawaii, the cost of living is so high that prisoners are outsourced to Texas. From Hawaiian, since the bulk of our prison population is Hawaiian, to be separated from their families is another level of trauma. These are things that I think people in the outside world don't understand. And here, the other issue I was thinking of talking about was media and uh, media representations of Buddhism and Buddhist um, perceptions of media. And so the way the prison population is represented in the media is often completely distorted. Uh, it really bears a little relationship to reality, the actual experiences of the prison population or the guards. I mean, this is another thing that people aren't, simply aren't aware of, the trauma of the guards. So Buddhists can help here in multiple ways. The meditation practices, of course, because this would help both the guards and the prison population. Um, and it does. It really does. Um, but it's not easy, because the prisons are not always receptive to Buddhist uh, volunteers. We are continually bought. I also volunteer in Donovan, down on the Mexico border. Um, the, the Buddhist programs are often bumped 
and they're, or, or they're scheduled at the same time as the barbecue. <laughs> yeah, 10 cents for a barbecue. Okay, so meditation or barbecue. <laughs> How can we compete, right? <laughs> so, and then yeah, the prisons are constantly on lockdown. I mean, we drive an hour and then nothing, nothing we can't get in. And then we drive an hour back. And this goes on week after week after week after week. So it's also very discouraging for volunteers. So volunteers have to have a really strong heart of compassion in order to be uh, of great service in this important need. So if Buddhists are going to bring Buddhism into the world, here's one thing that we can all do, even if we've only taken one meditation course or only have, um, you know, you don't have to be the teacher too because usually you have to go in two by two. So one will teach and the other goes in together and then in that way you can learn how to serve the population and just be a friendly presence, a loving presence. That's the, really the most important thing, I think. And to validate people's experience and listen. Anyway, we're not supposed to ask why they're in. We just listen to their stories. And it's such a great source of, of developing.